Hi everyone, I'm back again just to show you how I'm going to finish off this page in RJ Hampson's Around the World colouring book. It's almost at that final stage now, but I just thought I'd show you how I actually end up finishing up the page. Some pages I feel like you finish them and, um, well, you think they're finished and you close the book and when you come back to them later, you might decide to put a bit of extra work into it. But this is pretty close to what I would consider to be finished. But I thought I would just talk about um, some of the colour decisions. I started this page off with Derwent Inktense pencils and they don't have a lot of pale colours in the set of Inktense and a lot of the beige or tans or browns um, are quite yellow in their tone or quite warm in their tone. And I've decided that for this stonework around the arch, I don't actually like that yellow tone a great deal. I think that it detracts from this area here where I've used it in here. So. Um, to make this less obvious or by, you know, catching your eye, I'll tone it down a little bit. And I'm using Artex pencils that I have in the case here. I'll quickly explain that I don't uh, swatch pencils very often or any materials very often. And I don't store them in any particular order. Um, generally, they're in colour groups, but... Um, this set I think I put in to the case from the original packaging in the, in the similar order in how they arrived in the original packaging. And um, it doesn't really make any sense, but as I've used the pencils and know how they look, um, you know, you kind of remember that. And it doesn't really matter what order they're in in the case to me. Then at the back of this case, I have um, a few Faber-Castell pencils that were um, open stock purchases, and these are really old. Like I've, I've had these probably um, 15 to 20 years, so I think the um, font and the um, branding has changed a little bit in that time. I've also got a few Lyra, Rembrandt, Poly Colours that I've bought open stock recently to try. They're in there. Um, these are some Jazz Art coloured pencils that came in a set of Ocean Colours, I believe. And um, quite reasonably priced. I'm not sure if they're an Australian company or whether they're um, well known, but uh, I have a few of those in there. I have a few Faber-Castell classic colour pencils here that were unusual shades that I don't seem to have in any other set, so I kept those in here as well. There's um, one there you can see that I do actually use my pencils. <laughs> they do get worn down eventually. Um, so that's those. And then at the back here I have some um, open stock Prisma colours that I've been buying bit by bit. Prismacolors are actually very expensive here in Australia and the, the pencils that I've had for a while um, were really poor quality and they didn't sharpen well. They broke. Um, I don't know if I've got any here that I could show you but um, the barrels actually, um, no I don't really have any left I don't think, but the older ones, the barrels used to split where they joined the wood together and um, just made it so hard for sharpening that I've never really felt a need to invest in a full set of them. So what I do is when I go to an art store that sells them, I'll pick up a few open stock pencils that might be um, colours that I don't have a lot of in other sets. So it tends to be the... Um, uh, lighter beiges, creams, um, French greys, 
and those sorts of colours that you just don't get into it in any other set in the pale blues here. And then I like to have a couple of white pencils on hand because the Prismacolor white really are good for going over the top of just about any pencil to give the highlights. So um, you might be able to see that my case is very grubby. Um, as heavy handed as I am in my books, <laughs> the same with all of my materials really. And um, I, that, I think that's why I like budget materials because I can be a bit rougher with them. I don't feel like I'm gonna waste money if I ruin them. And um, <clears throat> that's just how my mindset is. But the Artex pencils are, are quite reasonably priced and I quite like them. They're a nice set. They've some different colors and um, they, they work well. So that's what I've been using a lot lately. I also don't have um, a dedicated craft spot at the moment, so um, I tend to have a lot of my materials stored away and I only have a, a couple of sets out at a time. And that's why I work in that set for so long without changing. And then I'll get another set out and put these ones away and you won't see the Artex for a while. So. Um, no, there's no real uh, reason how or why I choose things. It's, it's all rather haphazard how I go about things. So anyway, back to this one. So some of these areas here are looking a bit too yellow for me, for my liking. So um, I kind of want to grunge it up a bit. Stonework um, generally, unless it's brand new, is usually not very clean. And um, I'm thinking that this, this uh, picture is set in Venice. Venice is old. It's not necessarily going to be clean. So I'll, I'll have a go with these uh, cooler colour browns from the Artex set. And I'm, I'm just going to overlay some areas. I don't want to cover up the yellow completely. But I just want to give it a little bit of that sort of dirty, grungy look. And I'm not going to blend this because I think... The less blended that it is, um, the more it sort of suggests uh, texture and that the stone isn't smooth, it's a little bit rough, um, it might have a little bit of uh, grimy dirt or, you know, perhaps, um, depending on the picture, a bit of lichen or moss or something like that, which would be... Um, not exactly smooth so there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm choosing here um, some areas I think this section of bricks here would be um, raised up a little bit from this background so logically there would be perhaps a little bit of shadow there and so you might dark darken a few areas up like that I don't try not to leave um, do that sort of thing on every single stone because in nature in real life nothing is ever really that regular and although this picture isn't trying to be a realistic photograph um, logically my brain tells me that you know there will be a little bit of shadow under these things and um, while that would be happening for an illustrative sort of approach, it doesn't have to be regular, uniform, and all over the place. I think if you keep things too regular and um, too controlled, sometimes that can be a little bit boring for the eye. Your brain tells you one thing, but when you're looking at um, artwork or illustration or a picture in a book, um, you're not necessarily expecting it to look like a photograph either. So your eye likes to sort of look at that variance, that bit of variety and to sort of travel around the picture. And um, it, it would get a bit boring if I had that exact amount of shadow under every single brick. 
Once again, I'm, I'm really not great at explaining things, but I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Now these um, stones here have got um, little, almost like lion faces on them. And um, although I don't want these to stand out as a feature, again, I'll just stick a little bit of um, shadow around there just to suggest that they are in fact raised off of the back of the stone, that they're not completely flat. Because you can see the way RJ's drawn this one here. He's looking out and he is actually raised from that piece of stonework. Um, what I like to do is um, sit back from the picture and have a look at it and not actually look at each individual detail that's in the picture, but kind of soften your glaze a little bit, um, your gaze, sorry, not glaze, um, soften your gaze a little bit and try to sort of not focus on the detail, but the picture as a whole. And you will see where um, dark and light uh, areas of the picture stand out or recede. And you'll think, oh, hang on, what's going on over there? So, it, you know, it might actually need that little bit of a touch of a darker colour just to sort of differentiate it because it's looking too flat. Um, it's, I'm not putting in perfect shadows here. I'm just sort of putting a little tiny bit. I'm not using a lot of pressure there, just generally just running the pencil over the paper to just give a little tiny bit of colour. Um, this is all looking a little bit flat here to me still as well, so I'll just come in here. The, the stonework looks like a twisted rope, so um, obviously that's not going to be completely flat either. And, and what I've done prior to filming is uh, where this was all the yellowy beigey colour um, and was very yellow, I actually used the, um, I think it was the Prismacolor French Grey. Uh, let me just have a look. No, that one's Putty Beige. Um, let's have a look, was it this one? Ah, the 20% French Grey, which actually doesn't, look like the uh, barrel colour at all but I used that over the top just to dull down that um, warmth of the yellowness and it it kind of uh, looked a little bit murky and it's almost got a lavender shade about it. I find it hard to describe colours sometimes because we all see colour so differently. My son actually has um, a form of colour blindness that he can see red and green, no problem. But when it comes to colours like, like this um, and pastel shades, he has no idea what they are. And so something like this, which is a grey to lavender, um, he just sees that as a grey or a beige. So when we describe colours, it's, it's a bit pointless really because we all actually see them differently and we would describe them differently. So... Um, I also find that this colour from Prismacolor, the Putty Beige, is really handy to have to just knock back that um, vibrancy of some colours without actually adding a new colour in too much. And it's really good for that sort of dirty, grungy um, look that you want to get with some stonework or even with some metals. And... Um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with how that's looking now. I don't think that needs too much more done to it, although that is looking a bit flat there. Um, this up here is still looking a bit too yellow to me, so I'll put a little bit of extra brown over that. Now this one here is Van Dyke brown. It's quite a cool brown. So it's just gonna knock that brightness back a little bit. And by trying to work a little bit more lightly now and not add too much colour, it's, it's just a case of um, knocking back the values of those 
colours that are either too bright or too warm. It's not really adding a lot of extra colour in. You can just start to um, I don't know, get a little bit of uh, cohesiveness, I guess, to to your picture. It'll probably be a little bit darker in there. Now, sometimes when I do these things, I think about what um, the real life object might be like. And if you have trouble visualising that, you can always um, Google some images or go on Pinterest and look at some images to give you ideas of, of, of what it actually looks like in real life. But ultimately, for me, when I sit back and look at this picture, it's not about it being lifelike or believable. It's, it's about being visually appealing. And it only really needs to be visually appealing to me because it's my book. And um, some people may look at it and think, my word, what have you done that for? But it looks okay to me and, and ultimately that's all that matters. Okay, so as you can see, I just jump around and I, I just keep adding those little bits in until I feel like I'm happy. This is looking a little bit too light here because that would be slightly behind that building there. So just knock that back a little bit. I don't want to make any of this uh, highly detailed I want to highlight it because it's the buildings in the background that, you know, basically tells us that it's Venice. But I don't need to have a lot of detail in there and it doesn't have to be perfectly coloured. It's just the colours that draws your attention. Same with these little figures in these boats. They aren't the focus of the picture for me. So I've coloured them quite roughly. Then they're, they're not perfectly coloured at all. It's more about just getting the colours in there but Mr Fogarty himself is the um, star of the show he's the meaning the reason that we're looking at the uh, picture and so it's really about um, you know colouring him the best and drawing attention to him um, I'm just going to actually add a little bit of extra dark under there just to give him a little bit more of a detail. He's got some bags under his eyes there. A little bit there because that would have a bit of a cast shadow from his shirt. And same with his arm, he would have a little bit of a cast shadow. And then on his legs. Um, I'm not really too fussed about this because his feet aren't the focus. The focus is his face, um, his upper body here and what he's doing. So um, that's what I'd like to be coloured a little bit nicer than the rest of it, I guess. Um, not very good with my descriptive words, so I'm sorry, I'll try and get a bit better with that. And now I'm just going to put a touch of grey in here um, just to suggest the pages. And this one is a cool grey 50%. And I'm just going to put a little touch in there. That's all it needs just to show that little bit of depth. Um, we basically want a white handkerchief so that just needs a bit of shadow there. Um, I'm not great with colouring glass, so I tend to put a little hint of the surrounding colours on the glass um, because that's what glass does. It kind of reflects and picks up those surrounding colours. Um, and then the rest I just leave white, I don't touch it. Um, the little cork there could probably do with a touch of an ochre or something like that. Uh, let's have a look. We've got yellow ochre here, so just a touch in there. And you see that um, I don't keep my pencils very well sharpened either, so all a bit rough and ready and 
you have to take me as you find me, but uh, that will do. I'm quite happy with his jacket. I can't think of any colour what to do his buttons, so I'll leave them white. Because um, if I put some colour on them, they're going to disappear. And I don't really want to use silver on there, so... Uh, the last little bit probably is the bottom of these stones here. Um, the Artex have a yellowish grey. And I'm just going to put a little bit of extra on there. And I've just gone over the top of that little bit of dark colour there and blended that in. And um, I like the fact that there's a little bit of texture showing in here with the marker. It's not completely smooth. That's fine. That area there was done with a, um, a connector pen. And you can see I haven't used a lot of connector pen on this one. I had already pre-coloured Mr. Fogarty's face. And I've done his uh, jacket and his beret and then decided that the rest of it, I'd rather just use the ink tents. And I, I thought I'd show you this as well. Um, I have an old Prismacolor colourless blender here, alcohol colourless blender. And um, I don't use that end at all, but I use this end. As you can see, it's quite stained. I have put... Um, some low toxic solvent into the uh, what is that called that thing that goes in the inside of the barrel there um, it was long dried up so um, it was quite safe to put the solvent in there and um, I use that to just sort of come in sometimes if I want the coloured pencil a little bit more blended, a little bit smoother and not so textured. And I just use that to take those um, texture lines and so on out and blend the colours together. And it's not overly wet, it's it's kind of damp, so I, I use a little bit of force to smush that around. Technical term there of smushing. And so I just do that. And I'm not going to do it everywhere because I do want some um, hint of uh, texture in the water that it's not completely smooth it's a little bit disturbed on the surface because he's got RJ's got those lines in suggesting that there's ripples and um, stuff happening there and on the video it's probably not showing up as making a huge difference but all it does and this is where we have to be careful. I've picked up a bit of colour there and transferred it. Which is not ideal, but in the overall scheme of the picture, it's, it's just suggesting that reflection from those buildings in the water. And technically it wouldn't be all the way down there, but hey-ho, it's there now and it's done. I'm not going to try and fix that up. So if that happens, I just, I've got a piece of, a uh, couple of pieces of plain paper behind here. Every now and again, you need to just take off that excess colour that the colourless blender has picked up and the solvent has picked up and clean it off. Otherwise, this is going to happen again. Okay, um, let me just smooth that little bit of sky off that's showing through there. Ultimately, I just uh, really wanted to show you 
that I really am not very careful at all. And um, if you're the same way, it doesn't matter. You can still get a nice picture, even if you're not particularly careful in how you do things. Now I'm barely touching that to the pencil now. It's just very lightly going over the top of the pencil and it's just slightly loosening up that the pigments and so on in binders in the pencil and smoothing it out. And I'm just leaving a little bit of white paper here because I I don't know really why I'm doing it, but visually I quite like the look of that sort of lighter area in the centre because it's bringing the eye into that area and making you look at the buildings. Real life, obviously the sky would never look like that. And what I like about these um, old alcohol marker pens for using the blender, I can do a bigger area with the um, whole surface of the nib or with this chisel tips here, I can use the edges to just sort of get in there to the tighter spots. I don't use um, this end particularly because um, I just find that I don't really need to use the blender that much in, in a smaller area. It's usually the bigger areas that I want to smooth the pencil out and um, the, the chisel tip's perfectly fine for that. If I was colouring with a marker I would be using the fine tip end but I'm not actually colouring with this so and I'll just clean that off before I forget for next time and I'm going to call that um, done now so what I will do um, is take some pictures for Instagram so I'll pop the uh, completed photo up over there I like to keep that as my own sort of um, visual diary I guess just thinking that that's not looking great there so Go over that like that. So what I'll do for Instagram, I might take some closer up photos of the details so that um, you can actually see what those details look like now. And um, you could keep fiddling forever. And there's nothing to stop you coming back at a later stage if you think to yourself, oh, I've probably done that a bit, little bit differently. But at this point, I'm going to call that done. So I will say goodbye for now and um, hopefully I will see you in another video. Bye for now.